I'll start by drawing a little diagram. Uh, we'll have the ground here, and then we'll have the object um, starting at an unknown height up of the ground. I'm going to set a reference um, being at the ground level so that uh, when it just before it hits the ground, so it's going to fall down um, the height will equal to zero. This will be height two, uh, and it starts up here. This will be height one, uh, which is unknown. That's what we're trying to find out. That's the purpose of the question. So um, the starting speed is zero, because it starts at, it's released from rest. And the ending speed is told to us 0 0.60 meters per second. Other variables that are given are the mass uh, of this object, 2 kilograms, the volume of vibranium, 500 milliliters. OK, and it does tell us to use a conservation of energy to solve this. So um, potential plus kinetic at point 0.1 will equal to potential plus kinetic at point two uh, under the assumption that uh, there are no, there's no work done by non-conservative forces. So no air resistance, no um, anything being transformed into thermal energy, nothing like that. Um, zero work done by non-conservative forces. In terms of put, um, potential energy, there's two kinds. That's important for this question. Um, there's usually three kinds of potential energy that you have to uh, think about in this unit. The gravitational potential energy, electric potential energy, and elastic potential energy. Um, there's no elastic potential energy for sure. Uh, there's no springs or elastics or anything like that. Uh, there's no electric potential energy here. It doesn't say anything about things being charged or there's no electric field or anything like that. So um, out of the real potential energies, there's only gravitational potential energy. However, with this make-believe field, we've, we've ended up with a make-believe potential energy uh, and they provide us the formula for that, uh, the vibranic potential energy. So the potential energy does need to be split up into two kinds, gravitational and vibranic. It's a make-believe one. So I'll just split the potentials into gravitational and vibranic on both sides. Now, some values are zero here. It begins at rest, so that eliminates the starting kinetic energy. It ends at the reference. It ends at the reference. So that means the ending gravitational potential is zero, uh, as well as the ending vibranic potential energy, because if you look at the formula there, uh, there's an H in there, which represents the height above the reference. So both of those cancel out. So the six-term equation uh, is reducing down to a three-term equation. I'll substitute the expressions in for them. So gravitational potential energy, the expression is mgh. Vibranic potential energy, the expression is given in that formula um, for this fictional field. It's negative, so I'll change it to a minus, negative 10 uh, L H1 and they tell you what L means in the question. L stands for the liters of vibranium. And on the right side of the equation K kinetic energy is half mv squared. I won't bother writing the subscript. I don't really need to bother writing the subscripts because um, things got canceled out. There's really only one speed left in this whole equation. Same with the height. Both of those are h1. I could just write it as h just to keep things a little bit neater. No need really for a subscript. 
Uh, I solved this for H. The, that's what the question asks. It asks how high above the floor was this object released from? I'm solving for the initial height. So I've got to isolate that for H. Uh, to do so, I would common factor the H on the left side. And then I would uh, divide both sides by mg minus 10L. I'm running out of room, so let's head over to the right side of the page. So the height will end up equaling uh, half, and then mv squared, and then also divided by the expression in the brackets there, mg minus 10L. Let's substitute the values in, see what we get. Half, uh, the mass is two kilograms. The speed was 0 0.60 meters per second, which we're going to square. And then the denominator mass of two uh, times G of 9.8 minus 10 times the the liters, uh, and we are told that it's 500 milliliters, which converts to 0.5 liters. So I'm writing really small there, because I'm running out of room. Uh, but that's what I need to calculate. Let's see if we get some kind of a reasonable number, which is kind of difficult when we're just doing make-believe fields. And, it's hard to know what reasonable numbers are when trying to make up these kinds of questions. So I'm going to my calculator now. And I'm getting, uh, 2.4 centimeters, 2.5 centimeters, basically. Uh, 0 0.025 meters or 2.5 centimeters. So it did, was not dropped from very high at all. And I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense because it's it only ends with a speed of 0 0.6 meters per second. It's not falling very fast um, by the time it hits the ground.